how do you feel being on the road with these guys? Oh, it's pretty natural. I, I played with them in 2004, 2005. Then I have a, a death metal band with a ceiling off called uh, Insidious. Called? Insidious. Insidious. Yeah, so we, you know, like it's, I, I've been, I've known them since like 2001, so I know them quite well. It's very, very easy actually. How hard is it on the road to stay healthy? That is, can be hard. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of junk food, a lot of stuff like that. So uh, on this tour, I'm actually making a process of not to drink soda or any of that stuff, just stick it to water. And of course, alcoholic beverages uh, when needed, or when called for. Do you have any pre-show rituals before you get up there? Um, no, not really. Not really. Uh, I try to just approach it very, you know, like not to think too much about it. In the past, I thought too much about it, and if you think too much about it, it's not, you're gonna concentrate too much on the wrong things. It's better to just go natural and let it flow. I think it makes for a better performance anyway. If I try, if I try to uh, dissect it too much, start thinking about it, then it's not, you know, that's what I'll be doing instead of playing. I'll be thinking about it, so it's better just to just flow naturally. To what extent uh, do you believe in improv as contributing to a performance? Um. It, on some stuff, it's okay, but uh, I feel it's better to like uh, uh, it's pretty much play the same thing every night because it helps the other guys, you know, have the marking, the same marking, the same thing, you know. Like if I if I do something different, it might throw them off. Uh, when I approach the material initially, um, like they allow me to play my own way if I want, you know. So I'll do that then, and then once I come up with those parts, then I pretty much stick to that. Maybe little stuff here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. Because like I said, it just helps them, you know, have that, you know, like if they get lost with the monitors, like if they can't hear very well, at least they have the same same thing, you know. If I, if I do different things all the time, it, it messes them up. Like, uh, you know, one of the previous drummers they had, one of the previous session drummers, would play, like, the parts differently every night. And they were like, just like, what's going on? What's going on? You know, and added uncertainty. So I think it's just better just to pretty much play the same thing. But like I said, it doesn't have to be the same thing that's on the record. Like I, can, I can improvise it then, but like once I improvise it, just try to stick to it. What would you account for the still rising popularity of the war gear? Man, it's hard to tell. I mean, you know, like what's interesting about the records, like they don't actually make the same record twice. You know, it's, uh, all the records are actually quite different. And, you know, like, like a lot of people are like, oh, well, there's old style, new style. It's like, okay, kind of, yeah, but like still each album is very different from the other one. So. Um, you know, it's, I think that helps a lot, you know, like they're, you know, getting more majestic, uh, more uh, thought out, and, uh, you know, they're making good records, and the, the shows itself, like, what, what they bring to touring, it's, uh, it's, an, uh, you know, they, they work very hard, you know, like, uh, you know, important light show, good sound, uh, we have projection, um, you know, just, it's a good looking show. You know, especially on this tour, like, uh, really stepped up. There's a lot of projection stuff going on. There's a, there's a lot going on. Like, the lights are syncopated with the music, and, you know, it's, it's kind of very visual. So I think that helps a lot. Instead of just, you know, the average, just, you know, a bunch of guys on stage, you know, doing their thing, which, that's okay, but uh, by adding all the extra elements, I think, really makes for a more potent show. How do you think black metal can be a positive influence in a person's life? Well, a lot of black metal is uh, stands about you know choosing your own path. So that's I think that's very positive. You know, not uh, you know following what somebody else tells you. You know, but like believing in what you want to do to yourself. So I think that's a very positive message. You know, I mean a lot of people look at it. You know, like a lot of the basic satanic you know terms are actually if you really study them, it's all about doing what you want to do. And I think that's very positive as opposed to like just being told what to do. So for a lot of the guys that are getting into this style of music, specifically let's say drummers, what kind of advice do you give these kids that are trying so hard to play this level of technicality that's almost surpassed the guitar player in metal today? Um, well, that's a very good point actually, because you know, like a lot of drummers now, you know, um, they're expected to play like, you know, the bar has been raised, it keeps getting raised, and particularly with double bass, you know, so like. One problem that's going on right now is like a lot of guitar players are like, oh yeah, you have to play you know faster, faster, faster. But yet the guitar players aren't matching the drummers on the picking. You know, so it's, it's a very interesting point. But however, that shouldn't stop the drummer. So, um, you know, 
you know, I, I my thing is just go for it. You know, like uh, you can't. I understand there's like some level of like you know being kind of born with it thing. There's some level of that, but I truly believe that if you put your mind to it, you can do it. You know, I think we're pretty much limited. We are our own limits. You know, we put our own limits to it. You know, ultimately. You know, like uh, I've never approached it. Like I've, I've seen some drummers that uh. You know, like when I was, uh, you know, learning how to play and stuff, they would look at other drummers, that, you know, like say they see Dave Lombardo, and one guy would go, "Man, I wish I could play like that." And he looked at it in that aspect of wishing he could play like that, so he never actually accomplished it. I looked at it as like, "Man, if you can play like that, you know, maybe why can't I?" So, you know, not saying that I achieved that same level, but you know what I'm saying? It's just that positive attitude of like. Not saying, well, I can't play like that. I wish I could. It's like, well, I think if he can, maybe I can too. So let me try. You played briefly with the Black Dahlia Murder last year, I believe. Uh, was it two that years was in two, uh, 2005. That's it. Yeah, I, well, they, uh, all that was, uh, I knew them from, uh, um, I had met them before, and uh, they had a, a tour of Japan, like a couple shows in Japan, booked, and they had uh, fired their previous drummer. And they were in the process of auditioning drummers, but they needed somebody just to like do the shows. And that that's all that ever was. They just had me do the shows. I was like, ah, yeah, I'll go to Japan, you know. So I just did two shows. And it was supposed to be two shows in Japan and one in Korea. And the Korea one got canceled because they couldn't get the uh, paperwork done in time. But, uh, you know, that was cool, too. You know, Japan's always killer. I mean, that's probably, <coughs> I guess, the, the youngest band you've ever played with. Yeah, that was a little weird, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, they're all cool guys. They're very cool guys, and, you know, but uh, when I was still rehearsing with them, it was like, man. <laughs> like, literally, like, the, the oldest guy was nearly 10 years younger. So it was kind of like a little generational gap there, but uh, I still had a good time with them. So, I mean, uh, they didn't uh, <coughs> haze you? No, you know? no, 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 nothing like that. But, like, you know, like, we're, uh, you know, I stayed with two of the guys, and, like, uh, you know, we're staying with their parents' house, and it was like... Ah, uh, hello, Mrs. Uh, you know, <laughs> a little different, you know. But um, no, nah, they're nice guys, and uh, you know, the drummer they have now, Shannon, is an incredible drummer. You know, he's like really good. Makes sense. Um, how does a young drummer start uh, and become creative, become his own drummer or her own drummer? That um, just listen. I would say listen to what. The guys that you know, like the people that influence you, and uh, you know, just take from there. You know, like uh, I mean, obviously it's all taking from somewhere else. You know, but it's it's all how you put it together. You know, and uh, that that's always something that's interest, interested me more than like say just trying to play something like the most perfect way you can. You know, like I've, I've seen some drummers that are really good, very mechanical ability. They play everything perfect, but yet their drum style is kind of like a little flat for me. You know, like, not not boring, you know what I'm saying? It's not, I like more the creative aspect. So it, it's cool when I see people that are actually trying new things or being more diverse. And there's different ways to approach that. You know, the, the biggest trick that a lot of guys don't get is actually to play to the music. Because I like to play technical, but in some places it just does not work. You know, and some people will try to do that. You know, they'll be in a simple kind of band and they'll still try to play technical and it just doesn't fit. You know, you can't can't do that you know you have to know what the music's about and approach it in that way you know if uh, if a band's more uh, you know creative instrumentalist uh, you know then sure you can go off and it won't sound bad if a band's more song oriented and you start doing like off patterns and all this crazy stuff it's gonna sound weird you know so that that to me is very important just pay attention to what the music is and play to it and you can still be creative in that sense you know, like, um, if it's more song oriented, you can do more subtle stuff that's still creative, but like you can do it in a way that it doesn't stand out. And it's actually cooler when, because you might not notice it the first time you hear it, and then later on you're like, oh wow, that's pretty cool. You never noticed it before because the way it's put together, it's very like subtle and it works really well. But yeah, I mean, just uh, expand, you know, listen, you know, and don't be afraid to try different things.